no, no, no. And you know what it is? It's, yeah, one sec. Sorry. Just, um, you on the line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me one second. Go ahead, finish oh, it with your yeah. So Stay I'm on saying line. it's like, when we're doing that, and this is this whole new cult for me of opinion, where everybody has an opinion and they put their stuff down, then what happens is, is, um, oh, is that, sorry, what happens is we all have opinions and we all like, give me a listen, sorry, like, real quick, opinion like an asshole, we all got one. It's right, like so, but all you've right. never really lived that person's life. Right, I don't person. need to live that person. Michael Jackson paid his money after Michael Jackson is a child molester and I'm not taking my money. All right, I'm taking that. Exactly. Good morning. Good morning. Peace. Um, who am I speaking to? You're speaking to Minty, but I'm going to put Saraswat and Seti, the king, um, the general, five-star general on the phone right now. Okay. Go on. All right, Black Power. Black Power, son. My name is Uncle. You've been uh, on Omega before, and I did come to your last meeting. Welcome back to the UK. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. How All you right. feeling? And so you're going to be Saturday. You're going to be where? Saturday? Uh, we're going to be at the uh, Bernie Grant Art Center. Okay. And that's on, yeah, that's Town Hall Approach Road. Okay. And there's some things, a couple of questions I would like to ask you, but on that particular um, evening, what is it you're going to be addressing? What will your lecture be about? is uh, entitled uh, Regenerating the Family and the Genius of Our Black Child. Wow. So, you know, that's going to be a powerful lecture because we don't, you know, we most definitely need to uh, get on top of that because we're in dire straits right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We're in dire straits. And, you know, with all this talking that we've been doing over the last couple years, you know, I got to say, what, what has that done? to regenerate our family. We're going backwards today, you know what I'm saying? Looking at these statistics that I'm going to bring, you know what I'm saying, for the people. We're going backwards. So, you know, all the culture got to step up. That's most definitely. The culture got to step up. Because we, you know, we're doing a lot of talking, but we ain't doing no walking, man. You see what I'm saying? Uh, right. Now, I know you're coming from out to the United States, and... We know we got many black genius children around, right? But what yes, is it that you're going to bring to the UK to explain to some of the parents in the UK about their children? Could you give me a breakdown of something? Well, brief? you know what? Just looking at you know the system that we brought, you know, the, you know the BPC, you know, attracting the youth. A lot of times we don't do sorry, the sorry, 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 that sorry. What's BCT? What's that? BPC. That's my organization. We've okay. been in. You know, for the last, you know, 12 years, you know, going around and providing, you know, the community platform, community lecture. You know, I came up in Detroit Public School. So when I started doing, you know, my African rites of passage and my teachings, long before I was out here lecturing, I was already teaching in Detroit Public School. And so I was laying down my platform back then. The thing is, we, we attack the children too much. We attack a platform, you know, without em, you know without embracing the platform. A lot of us, or a lot of the elders, we attack the, the rap. We attack even the way they dress. We attack all of that. You know what I'm saying? And in doing that, we pushed our children away and start, instead of embracing that platform and using it for our own advantage, you know, to make that connection with our children, we kind of pushed them away because it's it's a it's almost a war going on in the states. You know, in certain areas with the with the youth and the elders. You know that the youth coming up and they really don't have any wealth. They really don't have anything. You know, you know, as far as other children of other races, they don't have nothing. You know, I was just saying. You know, it's it's been projected. By 2020, that blacks in America are going to be at zero wealth. This is all over the Internet. You can go up there right now. So, I mean, when you got all these, you got all these rules and regulations that you are, you, you throwing out here to the children and what they can't do, and you got these babies at zero wealth. You see what I'm saying? All that talk don't mean it's all over the Internet. They saying in two years that the average white family in America, average white family, 
is going to have close to $200,000. And the average black family is slated to have $1,700. Shit, if I bring that to Britain, that won't even be a thousand dollars. All right, because no, I think Claude Anderson explains that that the wealth of um, money in our community, in the white communities, is able to revolve seven times. It only revolves one time in our community. So we might not even, we might not even, might not even be one now. Uh, you know, I'm that's, gonna get back. I'm gonna get back to that with you. There's something I wanted to ask you though. All right. Okay. Yes, and, sir. Uh, well, let, before I get you and I've seen some of your videos recently with you and my son. Son, I call Fear Allah my son. Son. All right. Okay. Not because he's mine, but because he shines. All right. That's right. And That's I've right. seen a lot of your videos, but one of the things I want to ask you, and I needed a break, a quick breakdown, and you might have to call me back after 11 o'clock news. But okay. Could you give a quick breakdown? Because there's a lot of people over here is involved in the Metroneta, and you're saying it hasn't been deciphered, right? Correctly. Yes, sir. Right? So, yes, sir. Yes, exactly. I'd like to I'd like to know who. What, I know that last time I spoke to you, I asked you about Sean Pauliani, and I thought it was a, co um, a, a black dude, but you said no, it was a French dude, right? Sean Pauliani. Right. Yeah. Could you explain Sean Pauliani? I think the other one is Heropolo and Philippus. How are they all connected to the Rosetta Stone, real quick? Who's re re connected to it? Well, only Sean Pauliani is connected to the uh, Rosetta Stone. Heropolo and all of those. That, you know, and, and no, there's no documentation that either one of them even existed. I know, I know that was Philippus. Right, wasn't that you Philippus? Know, go ahead. Sorry, no, wasn't that Philippus that they said never existed like Jesus? Well, you know what, them Greeks, when it come down to it, if you listen and, and study Walter Williams, it will make sense after you put research in. You know what I'm saying? You got all these, such as Plato and Socrates and whatnot. They don't have any literature. They don't have no original literature. No, no Greek. When you go into Kemet, you know, and I'm using it for, you know, so people understand what I'm saying. Egypt is the only ancient civilization that left its own original literature. No other civilization from the ancient world left literature. So when you say Plato and you say Socrates, these is books that just been written, you know what I'm saying, in the last two, three hundred years. You know, but they don't have the original literature of any Plato, any Socrates, any Aristotle. And as Walter William broke it down, and I've done the research, and he's absolutely correct. Because if you, I just put a, 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 a news report up just three days ago. And it said the Dead Sea Scrolls, that they didn't admit it, that even five of them were fake, even though we know all of them are fake. It was just on CNN. Now, this is what Walter Williams said 10 years ago. You see what I'm saying? That right. they were fake. So you got to give credit, you know, to some of the research uh, that's been done. You see what I'm saying? By this brother. But, you know, the Greeks never produced any original literature, so... Really, most of what you're getting from the Western world came after Gutenberg created the printing press. 99.9% of the European population was illiterate into the last 200 years. They ain't even got the printing press cranked up. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So even though they had it in the 14, late 1400s, the population was ignorant. So they still had to you know, educate the, the European public into even what an alphabet was so they could produce literature. All right. You see what I'm saying? So all of this talking about some there. So when they came into Egypt, when uh, Alexander came into Egypt, the Greeks were illiterate. They right. had no literature. And we need to stop this. You see what I'm saying? You can't. And we, you know, as a researcher, the first thing I'm going to ask you is a reference. Where's the reference at? Where's the reference at? So if you say uh, uh, Aristotle, Plato, and Socrates was at 400 B.C., I, I would be thinking you had a reference from 400 B.C. And I'm not talking about one book, because just like I tell people, another thing about ancient Egypt is the mass production of when you say institution, and Walter William used that word. No, sorry, general, general. Yes, sir. 
I'm going to stop you there because I'm going to ask yeah, you. I already see I'm going in. <laughs> no, 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 son. I'm going to want you to call back because i got a news coming up in a few, um, three minutes, right? And it okay. lasts for 10 minutes. I'd like you to call back so we can go further. But before we call it a wrap on this, before you go to the come back on, okay. um, who is your master teacher? Well, I studied up under Dr. Ben and Dr. Clark first. Right, I studied... Cool. I studied, I studied under Dr. Clark 10 years before he passed, and I studied under Dr. Ben in 20, 30 years, you know, before he passed. And no. then I, went, I studied under Ashrock Quasi for 13 years. Matter of fact, no, longer than that, 16 years. Okay. You know, and I studied under Walter Williams for about 10 years. So you got a good so track I mean, record. Personally, personally, you know what I'm All saying? Right. I'm going to ask you this question. i got like three minutes. So when I do tell you to stop, I'm going to ask you to call back, right? Okay. Now, what is it with you and the Nation of Islam and fear of Allah? I listened to last, the last, uh, last night I was listening to something and it's like, I don't take it, but like you ain't got no government on your mouth. When you be going on at the Nation of Islam, is it, why is that? Because they, because the nation of Islam is no, is not the nation of Islam. But haven't they been instrumental to? Been, well, you tell me what they've been instrumental in, and I tell you if you, you know. Well, educating. I'm ask you that. What have they been instrumental in? Educating black men. Okay, educating black men, and what? That's very key. And what? Edu to, to be self reliant. So man say he's educating black men, and I ask him the same goddamn question because if we had twenty twenty, if we had zero wealth. And you've been on the field longer than anybody. You're going to get more, you know, you're going to get more questioning than anybody. You understand? If, we, if you have been marching and you've been educating black men for 30 and black families for 30 years, you understand, since or 40 years, since the death of Elijah Muhammad, the question becomes, what have you educated in? But isn't you that... But, um, General, isn't that like a divide and conquer when we start no, looking at... No, it's not a divide and conquer. It's holding people to accountability, okay? Nobody's walking around here and not being held to... And that's what's wrong with everybody, because you hold them up like a cult figure. You understand what I'm saying? That's what a cult is. When you can't even... You know, Dr. Clark was on Farrakhan here before. You, you mean to tell me that wasn't principle? This is principle. This is possible. You, you're saying that the black man is God, and you're leading our people down the road to a white organ, co-organization of Scientology. And we went in on, and I, and I put up there again, where the Nation of Islam also, you know, they uh, promoted Jim Jones. Okay. Now, I bet you the I, people that was laying out there in that damn field with somebody would have called them on it then. See, but that's what's wrong with us, because we cult figures. When it's time to call somebody on it, you don't call them. So I didn't show many pictures where Jim Jones was in Moss Merriam in L.A., the in, in NOI, was also protecting him. And we talking about the Ku Klux Klan, okay? Y'all brought him in there. And so who called him on that? Who called him? As a matter of fact, nobody even called called him on Jim Jones, and you can see that right there in front of your eyes. So, man, don't, don't come on, man. Don't be walking around. All right, here. General. Go ahead, all I'm, right. I'm going to want you to call back. <laughs> I want you to call back at 10 after. I'll call you back after 10 after, and we'll continue this, all right? All right, brother. All right, thanks, man. Holler at you in a hot minute. Peace, peace man. One. Peace. All right, catch you on the news interview, man. Peace. Peace, the General. Yes, sir. Ah, yes. Pleasure to have you back again. All right? Good. Now, before I go any further, let me just... Okay, good brother. All right, peace, son. All right. Hey. Um, so before we go back, I don't want to go back to the nation. We'll do that in a minute. The genius of the black child. Continue from there, please. Well, you know what? Again, you know, I, I, I've had this platform for many, many years. And, you know, a lot of people can say what they want. I've attracted a lot of you. Even families, you know, and, you know, I, I've been doing this a long time. A lot of people just don't want to get credit where credit is due. And, 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 and the fact is, I've attracted more youth than any one group. Or when, when, you know, I'm just going to be 100. You know, my, 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 my platform stay with the youth. You know what I'm saying? Because I give them praise and I've always had a youth-oriented platform, even when I brought the music. 
out loud for many of these young brothers and sisters that was in the music to be a part of my platform, you know, and, and, and you know, and, and just keeping it street, not, you know, like, you know, the average cat, but keeping it street, keeping it, you know, because many organizations, they got so many rules and regulations that they don't even follow, you know what I'm saying? So ain't nobody coming to get to all of that. You know what I'm saying? And you, you, you got an anti-youth platform, or you know, or you don't have any, you know, any type of uh, platform that's going to attract the youth. So you know, I've always kept, you know, even for you know, young Pharaoh, you know, which he, he he's a, he's a, he's a uh, young brother. He ain't no youth in that sense, but just to see how he he came and we got together and we we've been working as a team now. We done done almost 50 lectures, you know what I'm saying? All, you know, ain't no arguing or nothing. We cut off all the, you know, the arguing. And, and the groups that was arguing before we got together still arguing. See, don't nobody want to give us no damn credit. I'm going to just be 100. Even when they see us doing, you know, positive things, they still don't want to give it. And nobody said, oh, Pharaoh and said he's been working. They done done almost 50 lectures. No arguing, no nothing. But when we was messing with the groups and the individuals that was causing all the arguing, if something happened, you jump right on it. Oh, look at the, what they doing. Look at the arguing. Look at this, that, and And that's why the youth don't even want to mess with the adults because the only time you want to show up and say something is when something seemed to be going wrong. You see what I'm saying? Right. So that's where we at today. That's where we at today. So, you know, I know the... The black child is a genius. We, you know, we come from genius. But at the same time, just like, you know, we talking about groups and we talking about, where is the wealth, brother? Where is the wealth? Okay. Where is the wealth? Let me, let, me, let me go back one, as far as the youth is concerned, right? Now, yes, yes we. I agree with you, they are genius, but I, I don't think nobody's telling them. Now, are you going to be addressing youngsters, or is it, I know you'd like to have both, but it, would it be more that you pass this message to the adults, so that they can pass this message to their children? I ain't got, you know what, I ain't got nothing to say to the adults, too much. They can sit on down and watch, I'm speaking to you. <laughs> I've been talking to you too long, brother. What, you going to get 200 and get it? I can't let you get that. I'm, I, got to, I got to get the most out of my life. You see what I'm saying? I think the I think the youth can already decided because like right now there's some there's some wars that's starting over there, man. Where the youth is not the the, the young G's is going in on the old G's. If you ain't where's that? If you, ain't, if you ain't seen it on the internet, you know they starting a little beats and sh you know because no. Well, uh, let me say this. That's true because when I was on Rikers Island, you had in C74. Uh -huh. The adolescents, they call themselves animal lessons, and they were stabbing adults. No, they cut adults, right? They sliced adults, and adults were stabbing the youngsters then, because the youngsters saying the adults use them. So, yes, you are correct. There was always... Well, you know, you know what, it's, 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 it's even, you know, it's, it, you know, it's gone. I guess it's been going on for a minute. Yeah, but general, but general, what are you going to say to the youths them over here when economically, you know, we know they're geniuses, we know that it's in their DNA, but economically, when we're at the bottom of the totem pole, how, what is it that you could tell the youths them to inspire them to do better? Well, you know what, you come, when you come to this lecture, because I can't give it all to you, I'm okay. going to give them a blueprint <laughs> of what they, what, what I'm, I'm going to lay it out. No, don't lay it out. I'm going to lay it out what predicament they're in, first and foremost. Please do that for me. See, you, ain't, you know, you can't, we ain't talking about no big old mountain. You know, you know, it's small things. You know what I'm saying? Because, listen here, brother. You know, we, we be looking for something so, you know, like it's so large that is, you know, impossible. We talking about small things. Just having camaraderie. You know, man, listen here. We are, we are adults. When you have your, you know, if you love your son, and you show him love, he automatically going to show love to you. You know, you might not have all the money or whatever, but if you show love, give him wisdom, you know, if he, you know, keep him on the right path, show him how to get to the top. If, even if you ain't got the resources to get him there, just show. We not even doing that. 
We too busy running our mind. We not even doing that. So you, these young brothers and sisters is out on the street without even the wisdom to know what predicament they in. But general, nobody tell, but nobody general, telling them they in this predicament. But general, let me ask you this, right? Much respect to you, but when they see looking at YouTube and they see him where you're putting them out rightfully still. You're putting them out on Front Street, the organization, the groups that's not actually doing nothing. But one of the youngsters them look at that as like a divide and conquer, as I said before. No, brother, you keep saying that, you know, without, you know, you got to be my eye. Uh, don't, 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 don't do that. You got to be my eye. We're not kissing no ass. Now, I'm going to say that. You know, we're, we're going to call it right. Even when you come to the scale, brother. When you come to the scale, you're going to get weighed. <laughs> what you going to go to Anubis if Anubis told you you ain't making what you going to say? Oh, you divide and conquer. If you didn't do what you're supposed to do, you didn't do it. No, the reason why I mentioned okay, that. Well, you got to be balanced. You got to be my eyes. You can't say it's no divide and conquer when you've been called on principle. See, you're not being clear about that. Okay. See, that's that cult, man. You on That's cultish. Right. Everybody is supposed to be called on right and wrong. And if I call you on right and wrong, it ain't divide and conquer. It's no, no, principle. General, General, I wasn't saying that per se with you. I'm on a radio station, as you know. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. And I, I hold the same kind of views as Pharaoh and yourself, right? Yes, sir. And I'm very, I'm, I'm very critical in my... I'm, I'm very critical. I'm being in general, though, because I already know what you're saying. I know I already hear it from the other people, so I'm just being in general. You know, I'm not being specific to you. That's what everybody No, 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 I understand and appreciate that. But what I was saying is, is that um, I get the same flack because I'm out there and I'm putting people out on Front Street and saying that they're supposed to be held accountable. That's right. So I've held in our community over here, it's the Rastafarians, the Nation of Islam, the Pan-Africanists and the Nawapians, right? Over here, and I've been putting it out there and saying that I'm holding them accountable for a lot of things of our problems right. that they could address and clean up because they're a large group of people. Then, but what I get back in return is that I'm div doing a divide and conquer. So because I know and I respect how you and Firo is coming along, that's why I pose that question towards you. Well, you know what? Another thing, brother. Where well, would the bar? We, you know, I do research. I'm a scholar. You know, I, I know, and I'm not gonna. You know, I, I, I'm a master researcher. I've been trained by the best. I'm not no fool. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to show up with no emotion to live. I show up with the receipts. I'm coming with the receipts. You understand what I'm saying? And just like I say, even with the nation, nobody's ever called them just on Jim Jones. Nobody's called them on that. You supposed to have been a leader. Could you explain before, before the black general, community. general, some people yes, may sir. not know who Jim Jones is. Who is Jim Jones, please? Jim Jones was one of those occultic uh, preachers back in the, uh, I don't know if it was the late 60s, 70s. It was the 70s, and 70s early 80s. And he was the people, it was named the People's Church or whatever. And he took, you know, he took uh, 1,000 people down to Guyana. He founded some a cult, uh, or, uh, where, where it was, a uh, he bought some land, called it Jonestown, after himself, and when he fell, you know, uh, I guess he had taken these people away from their families and whatnot, and no one was even get, was able to even contact their family down there. So they went to the government, you know, and, and whatnot, and so even government officials went down there to see what was going on. He ended up killing a senator and whatnot who had went down there. Yeah, and it's entourage. Okay, so now, so they have a good idea who Jim Jones is. Yeah, they go look it up. And what, what he, when he knew that the show was up and that the people was, you know, the, you know, after he killed him, that senator, he knew the government was coming for him. He had all them people drink cyanide. You understand? The babies, and they got recordings. Them people knew they was doing it, but he was telling them that it was time to go to heaven and this, that, and you can hear the babies crying on the recording because, you know, that cyanide probably was eating them up on the inside. Can you still hear me, good brother? Right. Now, my question yeah. is, what and is so this? He killed, and, and to sum it all up, he killed about a thousand black right. people. What does this have to do with the nation of Islam? I'm because sorry. they promoted it. 
In what you aspect? Know, we got, we got. Well, you know what? I, all I can show you is the pictures of Jim Jones in Moss Merriam, and even in Los Angeles, where the FOI, you know, protected this man. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't know what capacity, but it's very visible that they had a working relationship. Okay, now because no, this man was in the mosque. All right, another, this man was in the temple right there in Chicago, and we talking about an organization that says the white man is the devil, and you and rules and regulations saying that you're not supposed to even allow a white man in the temple. Come on, man! But this man is in there, and then he ends up killing all these people, and nobody questioned him on that. Okay, now. Um... Uh, another question I wanted to pose, and I'm going to get back to the black and childish genius because that's what a lot of people want to actually hear what you're talking about, and it's very good information. But because I got you, and it's very rarely that you do come to London and so forth, so I might as well take the best opportunity and take, get the best. That's right. Now, what? The, how do you relate um, Ron Hubble to Ron Hubble? Ron Hubble. Ron Hubbard, yeah. Right. How do you relate him to um uh, what's his name? I just had it on Alistair the Alistair Crowley. Alistair Crowley. How do you relate the two of them? Well, you know what? You know, Alistair Crowley, you know <laughs> But can you tell the people all right, real quick, can you tell he is the superstar of you, what you call the new age movement. Could you he tell us basically what Alistair Crowley is about? Alistair Crowley is was called the wickedest man that ever lived. By his parents. Okay. You know what? He, he, his name, he, he, he's also called the Beast. Do you understand what I'm saying? And this is what he called him. Anybody who ever read any of Alistair Crowley's works, the homophobic, bestial language that and his ritualisms with human sacrifice, cat. You know, animal sacrifice, you know, using animal blood and human blood. You know, he was banned up there out of Britain. They banned Alistair Crowley out of Britain. Man, he fled. He was under investigation. Do you, you know that, do you know a lot of those rock entertainers in their music, they would, they would always give credit to Alistair yeah, Crowley? Yeah, he, well, he, he basically the father of rock and roll, and especially heavy metal. Now, how does he especially heavy metal? You know what I'm saying? So that's the influence. He, he's he's a pop icon, and that's crazy. Now, what does he? How does how does it the tie relate between Alistair Crowley? Well, and you know what, uh, L. Ron Hubbard. You know, Scientology is a theosophy, New Age too. Right. You know, just like you got, just like you got Baptist, Lutheran, and is just denominations of Christianity, you know, Mormonism, uh, uh, Scientology. Those are just denominations of the New Age mo movement. When you look at it, they got the basic plat same platform, the UFO, uh, you know what I'm saying, the channeling, and, you know, all of that is some of the same. And what happened is that L. Ron Hubbard kind of partnered with one of Aleister Crowley's top uh, uh, men in, in America. His name was Jack Parsons. You know, that was Aleister Crowley's man. So he, L. Ron Hubbard he ended up moving with him. And through Jack Parsons, you can look him up, you know, he got he became, you know, you know, learned in Aleister Crowley's movement, his rituals, sex magic, and everything. This shit is documented, man. Where he, you know, L. Ron Hubbard, and, you know, I don't even want to speak about the homophobic rituals, but, you know, I did that the other day, and I don't want to do it because uh, I don't know if this the platform, and it's, it's very vulgar. No, you no, know, I guess it's you know, not. But the documentation is all over there, and this is before us, so ain't no time to clean it up. It's just nothing but news reports all over the Internet about so the is relationship. This, so you is know, this is this part of the reason why you seem to be coming down hard on Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam? Because, because they should know that. They should know that. And then I'm going to come down even harder on you because you, 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 you let go Khalid Muhammad. You understand what I'm saying? A beloved prophet of African people to go mess and, 
And you're going to have to clean this white boy up. How is you going to clean the white boy up to justify how you messing with him and not bring one of the greatest prophets we done had? How do you not help him? You know, even if you, whatever you said that Khaled did, and I don't see him doing nothing wrong. You know, he went hard on the Jew and Farrakhan. Somebody pulled the strings behind the scene and, and he let Khaled go only to bring white people on the platform. You mean to tell me y'all don't see nothing wrong with that? Ma'am, I got to keep telling you, I can, y'all don't see nothing wrong with that. Man, if I, if, if, I mean, it, that's the problem because ain't really no black power out here no more. Y'all don't stand on black power. Y'all want some roses and daisies and all this and floating in tulips and shit out in the park with these well, white people. Yeah, yeah, but, but General, we're in the UK, all right? And let's look at it from this perspective. People in the UK get all the information or most of the information from out of the United States. That's right. Right? So whether it be Asher Kwesi, Ville Valentine, yourself, Fero. Well, you know, we ain't going to act like it ain't no scholars. There's scholars in all here. There's scholars of black people all over. No, but what and, I'm I saying mean, to you, no, what the I'm brothers saying to you. Britain, the brothers and sisters in Britain got and from Jamaica and all over. They didn't bend close to black power. Don't give me that. No, no, no. What, what I'm saying, saying to you. They come out of revolutionary you know, communities. The Jamaicans are revolutionary. Oh, you're so talking about the good old days. You got that blood in you. You ain't. You can go right back to Queen Nandi and all of that. Don't give me that. No, what you know I'm what saying to you is, no, what I'm saying to you um, is that in the UK, most of our information, 95% of our information comes from That's the right. United States. That's right. Now, I'm That's not right. saying that we don't have scholars over here or in the thing there in uh, Jamaica, but because in, Eng in the United States, you went through a particular turmoil, so it, re it That's required right. for you to bring out this information, to tell the That's exploitation right. that you went through. And this is what creates leadership in the, in the United States. All right? That's right. But in the UK, because we, the people have never actually went through what y'all went through in the United States, they become more lackadaisical. So we've right. never had no charismatic leaders over in the UK. So my question to you is, right, that yes, knowing that you got this information, right, and we have a problem, what is it that you can bring to us to unify us or to look at it from a different perspective? Well, you know what, brother? I stay to the truth. I just keep, you know, as I do the research, you know, I don't try to make nothing up. I don't try to make, I don't have to make friends with nobody. Okay. I'll just drop the, I'll just drop the truth. That's why people love me. True. See, some, some people, you know, as long as I bring you the truth and I give you the information, you can take, that's power in itself because you can take it right back to your house and rearrange or, you know, do things a different way. You know, you got the power now. Yeah, but General, you got sorry. The information. Sorry, General, I'm all over the place because I'm looking at the clock at the same time and I know time I know is you, moving. Brother. Go ahead. All right. But let's be realistic. As I said, we in the UK look to the United States because of the information. But we don't see, when we look at the house, the, the house of consciousness, right, or that particular school of thought or philosophy or ideologies, what we've seen over there is turmoil. What we've seen is a lot of... We've seen a lot of... Inf <laughs> right, we see a lot of beautiful information that's coming out to the United States. Beautiful information. That's right. That's right. And I, but, I agree with you. But, I agree with but you. But we don't see no substance behind it. That's right. And that's why we, that's why, you know, that's why, you know, personally, and I'm not throwing no shots, you know what I'm saying? But that's another reason why I don't mess with it, that, you know, like, but like, but the fact is, just like I said, me and Pharaoh been going strong now. We done did 50 lectures, you know, and we cut out all of that because, and another thing, the one thing about General Seti, what people can say I've been doing this professionally. I ain't talking about no damn YouTube. I've been going around. I done did over 600 appearances in the last 12 years. I done been to almost 60 cities now. You see what I'm saying? I done been to every, in 600 appearances professionally. Brother, I'm a professional. Why you think I mean so, you know, regardless to that, people keep calling and I've never had nothing happen at none of my events. See, that's that that's that shock edu shock consciousness. You know, when they go up there and 
say anything and do, but not one of them guys. Nobody's calling them nowhere. You know, they they only going to be on YouTube. That's all. That's where they're going to be. They're not professionals. Okay? I'm a professional. Okay? I've been, I was in Detroit public doing this. So I go back to 2000. I've been doing this for 20, almost 20 years professionally. Okay? Nobody else is doing this professionally. Now, I will put Umar out there. He is a professional. And I give him that. So uh, outside of myself, Umar is the only other speaker out here that's doing it professionally. Oh, I'm glad I'm glad you said that because it's like I remember there was a controversy and it wasn't between you and Umar, it was between you and um sorry what was the name? Um Senator. I Well you know what well, all of that, you know, I don't even want to get off. No, the only thing that. I was gonna say about it is and so forth is that there was he had a bad day at the office and you had a bad day at the office. But I'm glad that you're giving him his accolades still and saying that it's only but a few brothers. Cause we are we've hardly got anybody out there actually helping the community. Well, that's so it. So I'm glad I that mean, it, you know, anything. So I'm glad that you're it. trying to. We don't, you know, you know, and, you know, and that and that's that's as far as I'm gonna lead and go with that. You know what I'm saying? But I, you know, I can at least say he's a professional. No you know what I'm saying? That. So that, on that point, so. You don't have people out here that's professionally doing it. I'm not just on YouTube. I'm, I've done it on every platform. I've done it in Detroit Public School. I didn't done it at the university. I didn't did it in the streets. I didn't went to every major city in the United States at least five, six times. Some of them cities like New York, I didn't did over 50 appearances. In Detroit, where I come from, I didn't did over 300 appearances. Some of these cities, I done did, you know, hundreds of appearances. And this is professionalism. You ain't nobody going to keep bringing me in over 20 years, period. No, like true indeed, but general I, got to be, general, I got to be straight with you, man. I, I, I stayed up last night listening to you and Fear, all right? That's why I got bags under my eyes. I, I never had a good sleep. <laughs> but the thing is, is that you come down very, very hard. And, I, and listen, I don't know if it's within a professional setting, because one of the videos that they took down, you were saying that, oh, the Nation of Islam get um, their, their shoes from Payless or something like that, six, um, six for yeah, one. I, I go hard, I go hard. That's, that's, but see, that's, you know, that's, that's when I take it to the streets. That don't mean that I ain't professional. You but, know, the thing no, but I'm is saying, what, what I'm saying to you is do, that. The thing is, what y'all want to do is... You want to say what I say about the nation of Islam, but y'all you, don't want to see what they be doing to me. See, they ain't going to say nothing. They're going to do the sneak this, and they're going to take my st information down that just relaying information. You know what I'm saying? They the that's why, that is that the reason why you pages. ain't... They the one that flagging my pages. They the ones that's behind the scenes doing all that. So, so they, are, you know, they can't fight me all right. Because I'm a rhino. I'm a rhino. So you know, <laughs> you're not gonna fight me all right. You gonna you gonna be you know throw rocks and then hide your hands. And so y'all this... don't want to say y'all don't want to call them on that. Y'all just want to look at SETI, SETI, and that's why I come down so damn hard. Okay. Because so that's why you came down. Credit. That's you why you came down. I'm not gonna show what the other man is doing. You're not gonna be fair. You're not gonna be my yacht. You ain't gonna say, well, Seti, you doing good, woo de woo. You gonna say you own the nation. That's all you why you say this on the nation. <laughs> You're not being fair. You're not being fair. You're not. Just say what it is. Every time I say something, but Seti, but Seti. That's what you gonna say. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's not fair, brother. No, and listen. that's why I burn y'all ass every no, time. Seti. That's G why. General. General. <laughs> general. No, yes, the reason why, I know where you're coming from because I'm going through the same thing. I'm like the mirror of y'all over here. The only thing, I'm not no scholar. I don't have no, a lot of information like yours. But when it comes to certain problems we have within our community, of them stepping up to the mark and then not stepping up, I put them out on Front Street. That's what so, you're supposed to. To the point, at, to the point even they sent me to prison. The Rastafarians of the Nation of Islam over here sent me to prison. Wow. Right? 
because I was willing to talk about tell them they wanted me to keep it quiet. So I know where you're coming from, and I know the vibes and the passion that you're coming from that you want the people them to know, clean up your act so that we can move forward. Because if we got all this corruption and all this bad mindedness, we're not gonna go nowhere. All right? Until we clean up ourselves. And if you want to go back to the principles of my heart, then so be it. The question the, at the end of the day, brother, again, we got twenty twenty in twenty twenty. We're slated to be at zero wealth, brother. Who got us there? I mean, I mean, I'm just a, I'm not no, I'm, you know, I'm 46 years old. You know, I, I ain't no old man like that. You know, I didn't have nothing to do with us getting to 20, you know, zero <laughs> wealth, brother. Right. Somebody got to be called on that, brother. We don't have no wealth. We are going, and then the thing is, Marcus Garvey had already said we would be in this position. He told us in 200, if you go read philosophy and thing, he said in 200 years, the white man going to master all mechanism and technology that will leave us, you know, expendable. And that they, we were going to be slated for extermination. He said that in here in 2020, we are... We gonna have no, zero wealth. Now you tell me who what, what I'm talking about don't even mean shit. I think because Floyd, at the end of the day, this is where we at, and then we got crazy cracker like Donald Trump. You know, he's he's putting the Mexican out now, and I done already told him. Soon as he get done with them damn Mexicans, <laughs> getting on our people. So don't come with frivolous questions. Don't bring that to me. Our people are on the guillotine. And somebody better say something. Somebody, and don't be nice about it. Our people is on the guillotine. I don't have no time to make you feel good in your ignorance. I don't. I don't have to make you feel good in your ignorance. So, okay. Okay. Um, I ain't talking to you personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. I'm talking to the people. You know, I ain't. I would never disrespect you. I'm just saying, so I don't have to be nice about it or nothing. We are slated for extermination, and we got a few minutes for this crazy cracker over there named Donald Trump just come down hard on. He ready. He got all Aryan Nation cabinet members now. He got Steve Bannon, who's leading. The neo-Nazis of America, he was the, his, the White House yes, uh, administrator. All right, so, General, so what do we do? We know that we got to reach hands and, and hold hands together from across the pond and the whole nine yards. But you're coming over. What are the kind of suggestions are you going to give us how to help resolve? Because remember, we look to the United States. When the United States sneezes, the worst pick up score. You want, you, want you want the lecture before the lecture, bro. <laughs> All, right. All right. I got you. <laughs> I got you, you know, so much. You know, you need, I got, my, I you, I I got a listening gonna, audience, so sometimes I'm going to give you a lot of good pointers. You know, I'm going to give you a lot of good pointers how to get the, the babies back on the team, get them moving forward, and get uh, economically, number one. We, it, it, economically, we got to, you know, we got to, we can't get these people not a dollar. When you see that they already got 200%. More than you got. See, we run to every little store that the white man own and give every little dollar. That's how we do. We so we don't have no store. So what are we going to do if we ain't got no shops? Brother, we had shops. Past we can 10. have shops if we want to. That's nothing we can have. But it's got to be in your mind to want that. You understand? We don't want to do that. We want to we want to look good. We want to get the cars and the rims. That's what we want to do. Nobody wants. We we have not been taught as but, young. But, yeah, but didn't, the didn't Le LeBron James open up a school, a primary school? He opened. What what is one what, what is one school? I, I I commend that man. Okay. But what is one school gonna do? Nothing. We going we going in the hole in two years. That's why I keep saying we thinking it's gonna be education. Education ain't gonna get you out of this, man. Yeah, that's true. Education, not, uh, we 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 got most PhDs in America than the black race has ever had, and we still slated to have no wealth. That includes them. <laughs> <laughs> the only money you gonna have is the money that you work for. You will not have nothing in the bank or nothing. They gonna have it all. 
Do you uh, understand me? With the degrees. And right. then you got to think about, and I'll just bring Tulsa, Oklahoma. That was the richest city on the planet at that time. When it comes to where you think you're going to outdo white people in their system, they bombing your ass. They coming to see you. So ultimately, it's coming down to a real revolution, brother. It's almost, I'm going to just be real. The only way about it is, is revolution. Straight up. Well, I now, I ain't like saying you're going to run to your, but in a minute, you're going to have to run because he's coming to your house. All right, well, hopefully, Trump, general, uh, general, yeah. hopefully, because time has oh. run out on me right now. So yes, sir. hopefully that you'll be in time and you'll be, you won't be up and down all over the place. You'll have enough energy that we could talk again tomorrow. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's a it's a pleasure for you all to come over here, take the time out to come over here. Not like you're making millions of pounds and all them thing there, but you want to spread the information. The no, best way we possible. ain't Farrakhan. We ain't making millions of pounds. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not touching, touching Farrakhan right now. Yeah, but as I said, you know, we appreciate. Yeah, 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 we, but you know. Go ahead, Jamma, go and put that down, man. Let Jamma put this information yeah, down. That's a sneak preview of the fire. That's it. Not even All right, then. That's a sneak preview. I don't, preview. I don't think I will be around, though, to be honest, because that's, I've got a prior book. That's a breakfast special. All right. You know, so. Well, thanks. Who's this, Minty or Jammies? <laughs> Who am I speaking to now? Oh, this is Jammies. Jammies. All right, well, before you go, put back the general back on, please. I'm here. <laughs> well, I'm just going to give the address out. Yeah, I will do that. Don't worry about it. I got that. I got You got that? All right, back to the general. General. I'm here, brother. Please, I need you to say um, good morning to um, Anna from Southall. Anna from Southall. Anna, how you doing, sister? All right, that's Anna from Southall because she said she likes your voice and she likes you. Couldn't you wait sister? back. Thank couldn't, you, sister. Couldn't wait for you to come back on the, the air. All right. And Thank she said, just say good morning to everybody in London. All right. Hey, good morning to everybody. I love London. I ain't here for no reason. All right, I'm gonna man. Bring that fire. I know you've been sleeping over here. I'm going to wake you up today. And do it on Listen, Saturday. if they know anything about you, they will turn out in the tens of thousands because you, you tell it the way it is and you make no apologies for what comes out of your mouth. You understand? Brother, I, I do it, but just, I just want to end on and say I do it because I love you. Simply Whatever you can say about me, you can say it, but I say it because I love you. Truth. And this ain't nothing. This ain't not this. This ain't something glorifying to go around and have to, you know, you question about this, you question about that, and I have to stand strong for the people. You know what I'm saying? This ain't no glorification in this for me. You know, the glory is in my heart and knowing that the, I'm doing what's right for Trendy. the people and the ancestors. That's my glory. But ain't no glory in this for me. So this ain't no, no act or nothing. I do it for the love of the people. Okay. All right. On that note, Peace out. I do the readout right now, and if anything, we'll talk very soon, all right? Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. All right. Peace, man. One. Peace. Yes, Peter. Yes, Minty. Yeah. I thought you were, yeah, I thought you to Minty. I was checking. Yes, I. Yeah, since you're there, just read out the details for me, please. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to let Jammers do that, King, yeah, because I'm just in the middle of something. All right, then. Cool. Yeah, Mama. It's the Speakers Club of the Year Awards 2018 live in London. Regenerating the family and the genius of the black child. Featuring none other than all the way from Detroit, USA, of A, Sarah Suit and Seti. Live in the house, the venue, the Burning Ground Arts Centre, Town Hall Approach Road, N15 4RX. Make sure you move faster than you say bolts. We're starting the revolt right there. Get your tickets early before it's too late and you have to cry outside the gate. Don't wait. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much, and we'll talk soon, all right? All right. All right, man. Peace, peace. one. Out. Peace. All right. So you heard it. That was General Sarah Susetti, Jammies, DJ Jammers, and you had Brother Minty. Brother Minty, I've known for a hot minute now. All right. So they will be.